Hello and welcome to Internet Safety. I am your speaker, Dana Crawford, CEO and founder of Power Selling Mom Incorporated. Thank you for joining me today. Internet safety is really important, and most sites around, uh, or most states and cities in, in the, around the country have a place on the internet that will help uh, educate everybody. Florida has safeflorida.net. This is a great place to go to learn um, more about online resources, internet safety, and websites. You can also file a report if you have, um, if you're suspicious about a safe or a site that is not safe. So you can go here and report it. So you might want to check, do a Google search for your area for uh, safe surf in your area. These are the sites, different web browsers. We have Internet Explorer, Netscape, Firefox. I use Firefox. It is my favorite one to use. AOL, many AOL users use AOL to log into the Internet. It is your connection, your, your door to the Internet. And then once in, you choose what server or what browser you want to use to search the Internet. Many people use Internet Explorer that are using AOL. I highly recommend that you use Firefox. It's free and it has a lot of great opportunities for um, safety online. They all have uh, tools, but you need to learn about what tools are available within each one so that you can stay safe online and always avoid web forgery. Web forgery can happen just by logging into a, a faulty site and not paying attention. So I'm hoping that after today you will be more educated on how you can be safe online. One thing that's handy is most of the browsers have handy tools for you to set up and adjust the settings. I recommend blocking, turn off your pop-up blockers so that you don't have those annoying um, ads that come up like Netflix. They're well known for that. <laughs> but just check the settings in your browser and adjust uh, usually under tools. Phishing. Phishing is basically, this is how it's spelled, it's luring internet users to a fake website by using authentic looking emails in an attempt to steal passwords, financial information, or introduce a virus. So don't get hooked on these phishing type of uh, documents that come through email. Things to pay attention for. Dear member, the email has a dear member or dear valued PayPal member, dear West Coast customer. It doesn't even have your name. These are the red flag should go up if your uh, email from Chase Bank says dear client and it doesn't say dear Dana Crawford. I don't think so. This is another thing. eBay, when if you get a fake email like this that's not really from eBay, it looks like it's from eBay, I really would think it's from eBay, but just to be safe, I would then open up a new window and I would uh, go to a browser and type in ebay.com. I go to my eBay account, I'd log in, go to my eBay account and check my messages. If it is truly from eBay, there would be a message in my messages in addition to this email. If there's not, well, it's obviously a fake email. I would return back to my email folder and I would forward it to spoof, S-P-O-O-F at ebay.com. Same thing with PayPal. You get a fake email from PayPal, forward it to spoof, S-P-O-O-F, at paypal.com. This is, um, the if you've ever gotten one, it can be quite scary. I've had my neighbor and got kind of freaked out thinking that his um, PayPal account was in jeopardy. This is how they fool you. If I move my cursor down to the bottom of the page, I can clearly see this is HTTP slash slash numbers, 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 forward slash, you know, letters, letters, forward slash. Next thing you know, this is definitely a fake, fake site. It should say PayPal.com, but it looks just like PayPal, smells just like PayPal, but it's not. So you really want to pay attention because you can lose everything just with a silly mistake. The more critical ways to see that cursor is 
it's fishing or not is to put your cursor this is your cursor put your cursor over the respond now button so if this is a respond now button I could put my cursor over it and up would come this pop-up window and it would show the exact name of the location which is all of these numbers and this crazy website Xavier dot do 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 dots forward slash ding 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 that would be a red flag that that is definitely a fake website that's trying to get me to click and get my information. PayPal will never ask for your um, your email address, or excuse me, PayPal would never ask you for your password. They would never ask for your financial information, your social security number, or anything like that. You should always share information about your account once you logged into paypal.com. So always make sure that you are at the authentic site. And also, never download attachments. eBay or PayPal are not going to send you attachments. I know some people have gotten fooled where it would say, attached to this email is the important document you need to sign and fax back to us immediately so that we can activate your account. Well, don't do it because you're probably going to download a virus. I have no clue why my words have switched like this, so <laughs> no clue. But anyways, um, what I was trying to point out was there are other types of identity theft other than the Internet. Uh, there's credit card, which is the number one in America, credit card fraud. There's phone and utility fraud that people don't even realize that people can get, um, fraudsters can get a hold of your phone bill and your utility bill and steal your identity that way. There's bank fraud, employment fraud, government document and benefits fraud, loan fraud, other, and then attempted fraud. So it's not just all about the internet that identity theft can happen. It can happen under these uh, other items as well. So you really have to be safe to protect yourself. Online transactions can be as secure, if not more secure, than payments made by mail or in a store. And fraud can be avoided if consumers understand a few simple steps they should take when they enter the online marketplace. Here's my lovely friend getting ready to shop on eBay right now. Shopping at eBay, you want to take a look at the, the seller's feedback. Ask the seller a question or two. Protect your purchase. Always pay with PayPal. Avoid cash or money order. And take a look at the return policy. Generally, I like to take a deep, a good look at the feedback, which means I will go in and look at their feedback, not only their purchasing feedback and their selling feedback, what kind of sales have they had to earn all of this feedback, and what kind of items have they been purchasing to earn this feedback, especially if it's a high dollar item. You also want to think about um, asking them a question. You might even want to send them your phone number or ask them for their phone number if it's a high dollar item and you would just feel a bit safer nothing wrong with asking. You can get more fraud protection with PayPal. If you go to PayPal.com they have fantastic information right directly on the site that helps you and walks you through tutorials and videos to, to educate yourself. The main thing is to educate yourself so that you can be so that you would know all of the angles about how fraudsters can come at you. So pay attention. Bottom line is, who are you on the internet? So whoever you are, you're a very important person and you need to protect your account. Pay attention to what kind of passwords that you use. Don't make them easy so that fraudsters can figure them out. Hackers, if I had Dana1234, that would be very easy for them to hack into my eBay account if that were my password. A good password is to always add numbers and letters and numbers add some capital letters in there that's another uh, great thing to do I always suggest putting a Rolodex by your desk and have all of your passwords handy in the Rolodex this is a good way to protect you online the main thing is to stay safe enjoy your journey on the internet don't be shy and don't get too click happy because you need to pay attention on what you're clicking on so thank you very much for stopping by 
for listening in. I greatly appreciate it. You can visit my eBay store. Just go to askdana.com and that'll take you to my eBay store. Stop by my website, powersellingmom.com. It's a place where eBay sellers and buyers unite. So I look forward to seeing you online.